folks, it's Kevin. Welcome to the big board. And we're kicking off a little late. It's ten past eleven or thereabouts. <coughs> uh, let's see. So we've got ourselves set up. We have arranged our, uh, our units. For all of you who are aware of the TCS system, you'll be familiar that this is the first edition of the game. There are 15 or so out and they just announced the Canadian Crucible as the 16th title, I believe, to be able to pre-order. The thing I like about these original or earlier uh, versions are the maps are... I feel like I'm looking at a military map almost. It's, it's just got a nice feel to it. The units have got the old school... Uh, icons or iconography on them. I don't know if you can see that very well. There you go, so you can have a quick look at those. Uh, you've got leftmost number is uh, firepower, middle is range, and the right hand side is uh, uh, their morale. So, infantry, tanks, etc. I'm not going to get into the mechanics too much. This is not an educational session. <laughs> Although it is educational for me every time I try and play any game. Uh, so we have a, a turn cycle that involves initiative, uh, determination once you've done all your weather and all sorts of fun things like that. And the initiative has gone to the Americans on both instances for both artillery, air, and uh, uh, action phase. So we're going to start with artillery. And at the moment, I actually uh, have no line of sight or uh, spotted spotting range, which is a unique concept that I've come across in this game, where you may have a line of sight to something, but you are not able to actually spot it, it's not in range. And I'm just going to hold the chart up and that might help you understand that a little bit a little bit better. So you can see on the bottom left hand side there there's a whole bunch of numbers there. You can download this and see it for yourself. But basically if you're a unit in the open and you're three hexes away and you're an area type unit or A type unit, that means you're an infantry based uh, or infantry style unit uh, I can possibly see you at three hexes. But there are some modifiers for that, so if I'm in woods, or if I'm moving, or if I'm on a road, it may move you up and down, and uh, that will then determine whether or not I can spot you or not. So I don't really have a lot to see right now. And in fact, as the Americans, I'm going to pass, and uh, uh, neither fire artillery nor uh, uh, move or fire any of my units uh, for the time being. I'm going to let the Germans move and fire first and then take things from there. So the Germans have their opportunity to uh, execute fire. They are also not going to fire any artillery at the moment and so we're going to move straight to the movement phase or action phase. So if I haven't lost it yet <clears throat> we will uh, we'll get started. So I think I mentioned in the first video that I was going to take the 2-2 and, and head this way and see what I can do with these guys and try and uh, initially this is a dug-in position here and it's also in buildings. I'm going to try and put some fire on this guy here. So what you do in this game is you, you, you want to move someone, you flip to move and uh, one thing I failed to mention when I when we started is that, there we go, uh, when you flip the unit over, and by the way, if, there's, if, there's, if there is anybody watching, uh, we have a four second delay in uh, sound and all that, so I apologize if uh, we're out of sync here a little bit. But when you flip the unit over to move, it uh, costs you half your movement points, and you have a little arrow there, that means you're moving. So we flip to move. When I want to flip back to fire, it does not cost me any movement points. So, <clears throat> uh, classic tactical system, anytime you move, there's potential for you to be shot at. So, you, you really need to give the player an opportunity to, the opposing player, an opportunity to uh, elect to have 
Overwatch or Opportunity Fire. And because I'm not a well-prepared chap, I actually have not checked line of sights between here and here. So from here, we have a three hex range. Take my glasses off so I can actually see something. And we are at the 480 height. These guys are up on 520. So if we just used uh, 20 and 80 as our uh, defining uh, heights, one, two, three, range of three, we can come across and see whether uh, perhaps this hexide here is blocking, and that hexide is at four. Let's see what we got there. That's actually 460, not 480. So 460. And the intervening terrain, which is one hex away from those guys, is at 480. And these guys are at 520. So they're going to be in a straight line. I think we're going to be okay in terms of uh, visual visuals and line of sights. And uh, from that spotting chart that we looked at previously, if you're in the open and moving, I get to add one to the range so I could see you at four, and we are three away. So just for uh, shits and giggles, we're going to fire. Now there's a consequence for firing though. If I fire with these guys, if anyone else can see these units and has a line of sight, I expose myself to what's called return fire. So I may or may not want to do that. And in fact, what I am going to do is wait and see where this guy moves because if he gets to within two hexes, we get some column benefits and, and fire adjustments. So after all that excitement, we've flipped a unit and we've moved to one hex. So I'm, I'm feeling really good right now. So one, we've used half our movement points. So that's actually four, five, and for the exercise, uh, actually five, six. So I'm gonna move here. That's a straight line shot. I, I could probably hit that guy. So let's try and shoot him. Now what we do is we take the, uh, the attack strength, which was, which was three. Boom. Can you Sorry, here we go, we're over here. Three, four, six. At a range of two. At a range of two, can we see anything? I'm trying to get the glare off the screen for you. At a range of two, we get a plus. We get a plus one on our uh, fire capability. We don't get any other significant bonuses other than the fact that these guys are in open terrain and moving, which is going to add another two to our column shifts. So we have a strength of, what did I say? Four plus two plus six. Strength of six. Strength of six. And we're going to move two columns across. Actually, three columns across because they get one for the range. So we're going to be on the 11 through 13 column. Now, the sound that you all love to hear the dice. It's awesome, isn't it? Fifty-one is always a good roll. One step. So our guys have taken damage. One step of damage. I'm going to need to uh, Wow, morale of five, that really sucks. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, morale of five, when you take a hit, anytime you take a hit, you need to do a quick morale check. Uh, it's very straightforward, there's a, you, you, you cross-reference your morale. So let's do that. We really don't have any modifications uh, that matter here, I believe. We're not in partially protective terrain, yada, yada, yada. So it's a straight up five. I need a good place to roll now that I have all this crap everywhere. Five. 
five, I uh, thirty-five, roll the thirty-five. That dude suppressed already. I've got the pretty counters from Semper Fine to make it interesting. A little red wine. All right. So he's not moving any further. I'm not going to flip these guys over and move, and I'm not going to talk you through everything. I'm just going to get on with this. One, two, three, four, five, and flip to fire. I'm not going to return fire on these guys. I said you could, but I'm not going to because I don't believe I've got anything worth uh, a darn to shoot at them. That actually has a line of sight and is in range. This uh, this little edge here is going to block most people, I'm going to guess, and I'm not going to mess around with seeing if that's correct or not. I do believe that's going to block. Let's just check real quick. 520. 520. 500. So let's do... It's going to get in the way when it's 510. It's going to get in the way. So they're not going to be able to see. All right. actually are fairly significant in the move modifiers in this version of the game. And I didn't see any errata on that, so <coughs> it's half movement points. We have three. One, two, three. Actually, I'm in a half track, so it's third. One, two, three. And we're going to sit here. These guys are in half track. If Get in there. One. One. Now this is a hedge here, and I believe that hedges can cause a problem. Just check real quick. So uh, let's put this guy back here. So this does not block line of sight. This hedge here does not block line of sight. But what it does do is uh, give me some partial protection. So I believe that these chaps here are going to have a nice shot at those folks uh, as a move. As they move uh, to. Five, seven, one, two, three, and this is six, eight, ten. So we're gonna fire as an overwatch fire, only one stack can overwatch fire. So I could fire with these guys or with these guys or with these guys. Uh, so we're gonna use these guys with strength of ten, range of three. And I really want to hit on those guys. Those units are tough. They're, they're 8 firepower, 6 range. They're from the 3 or 4 Panzer Grenadiers. Nasty chaps. So I have, what did I say? 10? 10. Moving. Plus 2. So we got 2, but it's partially protective. So that's 0. That's poopy. And no other bonuses, so it's a flat, straight up 10 